All right, well, welcome everybody. I'm Associate Dean Mike Yest, and I wanna welcome you to today's info session on one of our certificates uh, of the four, and this one is on real estate finance and investment. So today we're very fortunate, we're sort of breaking into three parts. Uh, AJ Brooks is gonna present from the faculty perspective. Uh, he also put together this program. Um, Kevin Cush is here to speak from an industry perspective, and then I'm going to be playing the role of the academic advisor as to how you actually execute this certificate and be able to get it before you graduate. So you'll see all the details as we, as we move forward. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to AJ to kick things off about um, well, we can both sort of tag team this in terms of like, what is a certificate? What's the meaning behind it? And why is it that y'all should um, uh, start this process? Hey, Perfect. Perfect. Sorry, I'm gonna yeah. grab okay. this. Thank you, little guy. So thanks everybody, thanks for coming out. Uh, let's first talk about what a certificate is, right? What is a certificate? We kind of are familiar with the majors and the minors, uh, but what a certificate is, is a collection of educational materials that are put together that are multidisciplinary in nature, that are really industry oriented. So we've come up with these uh, focused educational programs for certificates in energy, hospitality, real estate finance, and sports management. So what these programs offer is a foundational and specialized knowledge and skills with principles in finance, marketing, management, basically all of the major business disciplines. Uh, and then on top of that, we have experiential learning opportunities involved in these as well. Okay, a little bit of a second. Uh, thing doesn't work. It's okay. okay. That works. All right, whatever. <laughs> All right, so why do we pursue one of these things? Uh, well, it really is a, a opportunity for you to have a specialized development in your skill set. So uh, beyond finance and marketing, we can really focus. Uh, really using these industries as a lens by which you can exercise your expertise in finance, marketing, management, and so forth. It also has significant career advancement opportunities. Uh, we have a, an extensive network of alumni and uh, interested stakeholders in this, uh, in these, all of these programs that are willing to help our students really pursue their, their career interests and, and options. Uh, third of all, there's a recognition in the industry. So when you come out of your program with a certificate, uh, when you are going to look for jobs, uh, they're gonna see that on your resume. Now, this is not a major or a minor, but it is on your final transcript that you've achieved this. And so that is an indicator to future potential uh, employers that you have specialized knowledge in this area. And then last of all, it's flexible. Uh, there's not necessarily a, uh, a ladder of education here. You can take all four courses at your own uh, based on your own schedule. Uh, so once you get all four of them, you will have earned the certificate. All right, so let's focus a little bit more on real estate finance. I'm gonna start with this question, or it's really a statement rather, but we have uh, a remarkable kind of uh, statistic here that two and a half billion people are going to move to cities between now and 2050. It's the largest migration in human history and represents the biggest development opportunity in the history of the planet. So, that's a big deal. And how we respond to this massive migration of people is really going to define the future of our entire world. So if that's not big enough for you, I don't know what is. And really when we think about kind of who builds building or why buildings are created in the first place, you know, obviously there's a need for them. There's a need for shelter. There's a need for places to work, play and live. Uh, but why do they get developed in the first place? They get developed because they add value and they add value to financial stakeholders, right? So we've got buildings that are being built. They don't get built. They're very capital intensive to build an actual structure. And generally speaking, 70%, around 60 to 80%, let's say, is uh, going to be financed through some kind of loan, some kind of either uh, first mortgage or second mortgage. There's a bunch of different products out there. But in order for people to feel comfortable lending that amount of money to build these things, there's got to be some kind of profit incentive or value creation for them. So that's why we are really focused on real estate finance, because you can have the most beautiful building in the world that would serve several purposes. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't make financial sense to actually build that building, it's just going to stay one of those pretty pictures on a wall 
uh, for, for forever. And so we need to make sure that prior to actually moving forward with construction, that these deals pencil out, otherwise they're not gonna get built. So uh, just quickly, I wanted to talk about some of the different career options in commercial real estate and commercial real estate finance. So uh, public and private debt, that would be uh, mortgage-backed securities. These would be uh, bank loans. You know, these are the people who are putting up the, the massive amounts of money in order to get these buildings built. Uh, we've got acquisition and assemblage. This is part of Maybe it's a development team. Maybe it's just a real estate investment group. But these are the people who go out and find opportunities to, to build. Uh, we've got development. That's pretty self-explanatory. These are the people who go out and actually build new buildings uh, and manage the process by which they start with an idea and go to operations. We've got public and private equity. Um, and that's where we spend a lot of time. And at least in my course, we really are talking about really financial institutions that bring, uh, that you're, you're analyzing and underwriting deal opportunities, and that often happens in public and private equity uh, firms. We've got consulting that kind of goes across the board with every industry. There's always opportunities to consult. I've done quite a bit myself. Uh, we've got asset management. So this is really portfolio management. We have a, a collection of buildings, uh, and we need to make sure that they're operating efficiently and generating cash flows. We have to know when to buy and when to sell. Uh, government and nonprofit, very big roles there. Uh, there's a lot of incentives, government uh, financial incentives out there for developers and, and real estate investors. So uh, working either in or being familiar with government and nonprofit institutions is critical. Uh, where are we? We've got brokerage and property management. Uh, these are the people that connect buyers and sellers. Uh, and they're the people that really operate buildings day to day. So that would be a career option. And then corporate real estate. So uh, this kind of goes across the board of uh, if you are in a company, for example, and uh, they need some kind of uh, real estate service. Uh, you could work in their real estate department and identify opportunities for that company. So uh, I thought I would just say why I think real estate's really interesting personally. Uh, why I do it, kind of. And so if we have, uh, really, the main thing is that it's multidisciplinary and dynamic. Again, this is a uh, this is an industry, not a discipline. So I can one day be practicing finance. I could one day be practicing operations. I could be looking at uh, analytics through market analysis. And really, no two day days are the same. It's really people-oriented. You know, we spend a lot of time on spreadsheets. But at the end of the day, every single one of those cells really represents a person or a decision that needs to be made. So it's very uh, people oriented and you're working with all different types of people from uh, you know, senior uh, loan, uh, senior bankers at a financial institution to you know, general contractors at the building site. It's really creative. Uh, so a lot of, especially on the development side, you can see kind of a, uh, a vacant piece of land and really be creative and use your mind's eye to determine, okay, what is the highest and best use for that property? Uh, it's deal centric, right? So uh, you are not doing the same deal over the course of your career. You are doing one deal and then you're moving on to the next deal and you're doing the, the next deal. And it's really interesting in that regard, uh, especially if you get some kind of adrenaline from signing your name on the bottom line. Uh, and then again, it's a high social impact, right? So we are real estate by definition is this tangible asset and we're really creating the uh, I say the word, the fabric of our society here. So uh, those are kind of some of the reasons that I think uh, studying real estate and particular real estate finance is really interesting. And then here's a quote from James Grasscamp. Uh, the successful real estate deal is nothing more than a series of crises tied together by a critical path. And talk to any developer and they will agree with that, that sentiment. And I think what it comes down to is problem solving. So uh, being able to not get really upset when there is a problem that occurs, but have a, a way of solving that problem. So uh, quickly now, because I think we're getting close on time, but what the certificate is, we're really developing our language and concepts about real estate finance and the real estate economics as a whole. Uh, we're doing a lot of Microsoft Excel training. So if anything, uh, you're going to get some really strong Excel modeling skills out of this certificate. Uh, we're looking at all different sectors uh, in real estate from office to retail to multifamily to hotels uh, and we're looking at all different deals within those sectors 
And then really at the end of the day, it's, it's storytelling with numbers. So having the ability to uh, create uh, a presentation using numbers and really defending a thesis by which you got numbers and proving that those numbers, uh, whether or not you should do a deal or not do a deal. And then kind of in general, I would say, uh, within these four different classes, we've got a financial modeling for real estate course. That's really understanding and learning deal dynamics uh, through the Excel model. Uh, it's the ability for you to develop your vocabulary and really level up those Excel skills. I've got a real estate private equity course. That's really taking a deeper dive into partnership structures. So, you know, they can be very complex and I don't have enough time to get through it in my financial modeling course. So I need another course to really dig into uh, equity partnerships and how uh, you align interests and uh, really uh, manage risk. Uh, we've got real estate finance law. This is looking at different legal aspects of real estate finance, uh, getting familiar with deal documents, uh, understanding some tax considerations. And then finally, we have a cases in real estate finance course. We have cases courses across all of these certificates. And that's really uh, an opportunity for you to learn from industry experts. And then at the end, you have a uh, project where you put your own deal book together. So in general, oh, <laughs> forgot about this. So I've kind of created this little uh, hypothetical firm by which we are doing all of these things. And it's called Riptide Capital, a uh, little tip of the cap to Green Wave. Uh, but I, I kind of wrote a little uh, statement of what we're doing here. And we're a multifaceted consulting firm focused on helping our clients cultivate greater economic and societal returns in the built environment while generating sustainable and inclusive growth opportunities. And so we're going to use this as our company together. So we underwrite deals, we underwrite opportunities, we pitch deals kind of under this Riptide Capital banner. And I just think that's a fun way to really immerse yourself into what you're going to be doing after you graduate. And then finally, I would say, uh, if I could use a few words to describe this. This is a real estate education rooted in finance, investment, and entrepreneurship. Uh, so with that, I'll be around for questions later, uh, but I will pass it on to our industry expert, Kevin Cush. Thank you. Wow. Can we have a more dynamic and energetic leader to this certificate program? I'm beyond impressed from an industry perspective with the curriculum design and that educational background and the skill set development, the vocabulary development, the particular tools that we use within industry being developed such that there will be impactful employees day one. And this is about industry and discipline coming together for employment outcomes at the end of the day. And this is exactly the innovative path that academia needs to take to generate those sort of outcomes. So kudos to uh, Dean Ghost and kudos to AJ for leading this initiative. There is tremendous industry, alumni, and parent support uh, just within my network uh, beyond what I could have imagined already. Uh, I'm Kevin Cush, a Tulane alum, uh, president of the PMAT companies. We are based in New Orleans and we're founded in 2003. We've transacted on about $1.5 billion in assets, uh, approximately 12 and a half million square feet in 17 states, primarily in the Southeast and the Midwest. What we do is value add and core plus development, redevelopment and releasing of what I call SOAR, suburban open air retail, the last mile of goods and services. And we're focused on grocery, off-price, necessity, essential fitness and fun anchored tenancy uh, within that sort of marketplace community that we build. We're typically doing middle market deals in the five to $100 million total capitalization, a uh, little bit flex uh, on the larger side of that equation. Uh, our most recent deals have been a you know six and a half million dollar deal, uh, $35 million deal and then a $95 million deal. So uh, as AJ referenced just earlier, it's deal specific and really opportunity specific. So another thing that they'll get a chance to learn all of the students in these cases classes. Uh, the theme that we invest with is macro market inefficiency creates micro market opportunity 
And that's for nimble private capital making individual asset level and market level decisions rather than broader portfolio construction, geographical or capital allocation. Uh, our claim to fame, our, our reputational calling card, if you will, is our 1,000 batting average since inception in 2003, over 20 years of never executing a PSA purchase and sale agreement and not closing on a deal. And that's standing behind what you say you're going to do, doing your work up front and delivering for a seller. So that's that's a value proposition that, that we have. Uh, next slide. I want to talk a little bit about Tulane and, and PMAT and kind of the crossover there. From the very onset of what brought me personally to Tulane was the experiential learning opportunity. And I came, I would have been interested in real estate, but finance is what was available at, at Tulane. So project, projects uh, uh, like the Darwin Fenner Fund and Birkin Road Reports were things that really drew me to the university versus the comp set of my uh, alternatives. And through Birkin Road reports, four years later, after matriculating to Tulane, uh, Peter Raschuti had covered the Sizler Reed, which my business partner, Bob Whelan, was CFO of before founding the PMAT companies. And after he did uh, his first couple of years, he had proof of concept, it was time to bring on uh, some folks to help scale the platform. And Peter personally introduced me to Bob Whelan. Uh, 18 years later, here we are. Um, from there, we've paid it forward. Um, my senior vice president, who is now an adjunct professor at Tulane teaching Argus, uh, is a Tulane alum. He came in an exchange program from Germany and loved it so much that he came back and got an MBA. He would have loved all of these real estate courses and offerings, and he didn't have that opportunity, but he went the finance route. From there, he went and worked at a German pension fund uh, advisor for commercial real estate and developed the skill of Argus, which I, which I determined through my career was something that we needed on our nation's platform in order to really scale appropriately and interface with the larger institutional level groups. The Excel, everybody does Excel, no doubt. Argus, very commercial real estate specific and uh, the gold standard of what's used within the industry, especially at an institutional level. So he originally interned, he came back full time and uh, he is now the senior vice president of acquisitions, uh, dispositions and asset management. I have mentored many students at Tulane over the years, uh, one of whom, who I never conceived, would uh, stay in the great city of New Orleans and end up working with us is Jack Pierberini. Uh, he's a BSM, class of 2019, and uh, a U.S. Army veteran in the 82nd Airborne. Uh, he went and served prior to coming back and uh, going to Tulane. And he joined PMAT in 2019, uh, initially as a consulting analyst and then full-time. He due to the growth of Ben's uh, demand for his Argus classes, one section to two section to multiple times a week to doubling the size of the classes is assisting in the uh, Argus teaching as well. So we've kind of grown that network. And now each of us as Tulane alumni have further mentees that are within the commercial real estate world. Just yesterday, I was catching up with a mentee, uh, uh, Ruby, who is at SRSA locally in the brokerage community. Uh, my former mentee, Christian McClure, founded the Tulane Real Estate Group, which has grown from 16 members to over 200 members. And probably the most active, non-athletic student organization on campus. So tremendous velocity in a few short years. The student demand is there. The industry demand is there. And these guys are doing everything right to put that all together. Next slide, please. So an organization that I'm pretty passionate about, and uh, not just as a, as a member, but as I see the impact that it has for students is the ICSC. And that is the industry trade organization for the marketplaces industry, or what has more traditionally been called retail real estate, which is drastically evolving uh, at this point in time with convergence of other asset classes. So we believe the, the moniker and branding of marketplaces is significantly 
superior in today's world. And through the ICSC, there's the ICSC Foundation, which is primarily focused on student engagement. We want this young top talent in our industry. It's underrepresented in our industry. And we've done a poor job of recruiting, of interfacing with universities. And that's changing. That's changing now. And we're taking an active role as a nearly 50,000 member organization. And other organizations are as well. This just happens to be the one near and dear to my heart within the marketplaces industry. So some of the things that we focus on, we focus on the ships, university partnership, mentorship, scholarship, and internships. University partnerships, Tulane is a university partner. We have 65 total university partners, about 6,500 student members in total. Tulane is 275 of those, so we are overrepresented. Let's go Green Wave. And being a university partner opens up a suite of opportunities for all of the student members. So then we can go to the mentorship, scholarship, and internship that they have access to through that university partnership. Mentorship, through the formal platform, there are 200 mentorship pairs in 2003 to 2004, and the velocity of growth is truly exponential. More students are applying every year, more alumni of these universities and more industry uh, uh, members of ICSC are becoming aware and engaged in this mentorship. So it's a very exponentially, as everything else I'm uh, stating for real estate, growing segment within the offering. Uh, scholarship, $500,000 in uh, 2023 offered in scholarship, about evenly split between scholarships administered directly by the foundation and bespoke scholarships restricted to individual universities like Tulane University, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, internship, that's something that we're still developing, but we have a full-time staff person at ICSC that's now been hired that will be an internship coordinator through the ICSC uh, talent headquarters portal. There is posting of internship as well as job opportunities for all members, including student members. And that's something that's gonna grow and be formalized. We also talk about the aims, learning and networking, learning perspective. There's a retail real estate certificate course that you can take for absolutely free as a student member. There are opportunities for Excel training at drastically discounted rates that's specific to retail real estate and drastically discounted rates for Argus training that, that lands with an Argus certification as well. So a complimentary offering uh, of the actual technical skills with the actual software that folks in a finance role specifically would be interfacing with, uh, with in commercial real estate. And from a networking perspective, uh, there are about 100 events a year. A lot of these are small local events with 100, 150 attendees, but some are larger signature events. And we've had Tulane students at some of these uh, events, even though this is a brand new university partnership. So last year at ICSC uh, Recon in Las Vegas, our largest conference, roughly 35,000 attendees, we had uh, eight Tulane students and in a first year of participation, a case competition team. So pretty impressive there. We had the very unique opportunity of having the open air conference executive conference limited to 500 C-suite executives in New Orleans this year for the first time in a decade. And we had 20 students apply and get accepted of nearly 100 applicants and 22 Lane students were there representing Tulane with poise and confidence. It is a buzz in the retail real estate industry that has created Tulane as a true target recruiting school, uh, if you think of it from the uh, investment banking world within real estate finance at the very early onset of this program. So those are just some of the offerings. There are others and there are scholarships to attend these as well. And you can speak to me afterwards for some of those other opportunities. Next slide, please. So 
let's talk a little bit more about scholarships. I put my money where my, my mouth is. I funded the Kevin Cush Professional Development Fund for Tulane students at the very end of last year. This is exclusively for Tulane students and professional development into the real estate world. A couple of years prior to that, a partner company of PMATs, also based in uh, Louisiana, they're out of Covington headquarters, and they're actually a, a strategic partner of ours, as well as great personal friends from an ownership level, also funded a scholarship. And both of these are through the ICSC Foundation. That is the Morin Ogden Tulane Real Estate Fund. So you have two groups with alumni locally highly engaged with this university and this program just within the marketplaces industry, let alone all of the other alumni connections that we have here and that I'm learning more and more about every single day and every single week that I talk about this program, that I meet more students, that I meet more engaged alumni. This is gonna take off like a rocket ship. I couldn't be more excited, guys. Uh, last slide will just be some contact information so you guys can get in touch both with me. I'm happy to share my Kevin Cush's Commercial Real Estate Resources Guide for students that I put together for my mentees and the Tulane Real Estate Group. I'm happy to put folks in touch with uh, C-suite executives for mentorship. I'm happy to advise on internships and on uh, job applications. I was just doing so yesterday for uh, an asset management analyst at Bricksmore, where I know the C-suite and the folks that can speak to what that uh, position really will be from a day-to-day -day basis. I love throwing the rope back. I, I have a true heart for this next generation coming into this industry and the talent that I see coming out, the way Tulane was represented at this executive conference just makes me want to double down here, uh, especially in partnership with the right leadership here within this program. So uh, ICSC perspective, guys, it's easy. www.icsc.com. Go check it out. There's student resources there readily available. You can get a lot more there digging deep than you can from me in five minutes. So thank everybody very much for coming and attending. I'm here if anybody wants to learn any more. AJ? Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin and AJ. So uh, a little about the, the nuts and bolts. So you can't have a certificate program without sort of structure to it. And the structure comes through the undergraduate office. So your advisors, uh, your counselors are the ones who will be able to usher you through this. And so just a few things to um, sort of uh, tie up our, our time today. So we've already talked about a lot of the benefits of the program, clearly expanding your career opportunities, uh, the idea to uh, sort of have uh, growth and fulfillment while pursuing this, this interest you have in real estate and weaving it into your other coursework here at the Freeman School. Uh, lifelong learning is something that, you know, the, the Dean Goes uh, has sort of leaned forward into and in that learning, especially through the experiential learning uh, avenue or lens, uh, as Kevin was, was mentioning, you know, the, all the connections, all the alums, all the people that, that throw those, those lines back to, to our current students, um, uh, let this be a continuation process of, of learning and real estate is, is uh, a ripe area to, to sink your teeth into. And then uh, these uh, idea of uh, professional successes, post your time at, at Tulane is of course what we are attempting to, uh, to, to put in your wheelhouse. And we have a very skilled and talented career management center that can help partner with you through that process as you think about what you want to do post Tulane. So the courses are um, uh, financial modeling and real estate. Uh, AJ Brooks, Professor Brooks just talked about that a little bit when he was referring to the course that's quite, quite popular here. Uh, real estate, private equity, real estate finance and tax law, and then cases in real estate finance, or we have a course uh, Argus was mentioned earlier in, in the presentation that's actually taught through the School of Architecture, and that course does substitute for, uh, for this. I, I should also say that this is the only certificate that's open to non-BSM students. It's also offered to students in the School of Architecture. We're very excited to partner with them as they look at it through the, the lens of development in real estate, and we look at it through the lens of financing and, and, uh, and analysis with evaluation. So... 
What do you need to do? Uh, we need for you to declare your certificate interest, much like you do a major or a minor. That puts you on our radar and helps us um, to be able to think about demand for these courses. You'll hear in just a second, I'm gonna say, in fact, I'll hop down to it now because it's so important, that there are only four courses for the certificate and therefore there's no room for error. There's no substitution. And the courses are not always offered each semester. So it's important that you are thinking about how long do I have between now and graduation? Can I possibly you know, complete the certificate? If you cannot complete the certificate, getting three of the four courses is still a meaningful learning experience, right? You don't need to necessarily have that on paper to still talk to a, pr a prospective employer that you have you know, uh, an, uh, an area of interest that you have pursued here at Tulane. But indeed, we want you to get the certificate, if at all possible, before graduation. Um, once you declare, it will allow the certificate to show up on your audit. So you'll be able to see which courses have I taken, which have I not, and it helps us, as I was just saying, be able to, to work with you to make sure that uh, you know what courses will most likely be offered in what semesters as you work with those BSM counselors. There are course prerequisites, just like any other course that we have here in the business schools. So just be mindful of that as well. So you may need to be thinking about your sophomore year, taking some of the prereqs to be able to take these courses in your junior and your senior year. The nice thing is that the general business electives, so as you know, all BSM students take 12 credits that are what we call the, the general business uh, elements. And so those four courses, those 12 credits can be used towards this certificate. So it's not that you need to get the 122 credit hours, which, uh, you know, let's just say that the total credit hours in the BSM, and then take an additional uh, 12 credits. So they are within the BSM, uh, which is moving to 124 credits uh, very shortly, you'll be able to, to fit these courses in. I mentioned the no room for error and the no, no substituting of courses. So the point and the takeaway is to make sure that you are getting with your academic counselors so that we can help support you. Uh, here is uh, the context. Everyone already knows their counselors, but indeed, for those of you who might be here or listening from the School of Architecture, we want you to know that uh, that by last name is how we have all students divided, and these are the people who can help usher you through the program through this certificate and then the other certificates that are offered to our BSMs. So with that, um, we can open it up to Q&A. We can also talk with uh, questions as we uh, go on for some um, libations, if you will, some refreshments afterwards. So I'm going to sort of pause here. We can answer any questions uh, or we can continue the conversation uh, later. Good? Yeah. I have a long pause there, so. Oh, we got one. Yes. First of all, thank you, thank you guys for your, for your time. I really appreciate this. this is such a um, an innovative thing that that I I was really interested in coming into the school, but wasn't offered. So I appreciate uh, the coordination on this. Um, I understand some of the courses have not been fully developed yet, um, and I was wondering the timeline to which uh, I could take, for example, the uh, the real estate private equity course. Um, I. I'm also taking the, the AJ's class with financial modeling. I'm also taking um, Colin Malmus's class and the real the cases class. Um, but I understand that only one of them can be used towards a finance elective. Um, so just just curious on the development as well as the application uh, when it when it comes to the audit. Sure. So some of these and AJ can you know comment and correct me as I sort of go through this, but courses. You're right that, that the audit is so important because some courses will only count for a general business elective. Others could count towards the major. And as you notice that these have been designed with, um, when possible, sort of an interdisciplinary lens. So a law course, a finance course, other certificates have management courses embedded in them, marketing courses embedded in them. Some of them though are not eligible to count towards the, uh, the, the major. What we tried to do is we tried to, where, where all possible, delineate that with the BOSG um, designation now. So um, we have the fall semester set. The spring semester is going to complement the fall in that most of the certificates are split up in, in two components, if you will. The fall coursework, two courses offered, and then the spring coursework. But the idea that Again, uh, we've got a, a lot of talented students that are maybe in their, they'll be a senior next year. And so they're really tight as to be able to, to get this done. For juniors, it gets a little bit easier, right? But um, the design that AJ put forth was 
these four courses, two in the fall, two in the spring. There are a couple, such as his financial modeling course, that is so popular, and it's also used towards the finance major and towards the finance minor that we had to offer it full semesters, multiple sections, not just, just that he's a, an incredible teacher, was because we have multiple populations that are coming for these courses. So it's sort of a long-winded answer to tell you that working with your counselor is where they can lay out that roadmap and they will have more information about what will be offered in the spring of next year to make sure you're not overlooking an opportunity what you need to take in the fall. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much. Please. And also, Aristotle, the private equity course will be next spring. Awesome. Thank you. So in regards to the real estate law class, I saw it is offered in the fall of next year, but there's no professor assigned to it yet. Do you know who might be on it? Um, that is in flux. Um, so it'll be an adjunct professor. So someone who is in industry, which is what we want to have, um, you know, uh, like the Kevins of the world, we want them in the classroom, also being able to sort of complement the, the academic work that, that you're doing. And because of that, the adjuncts will be rolling out in the next few weeks in terms of getting the contracts in place. Um, most likely it will be someone who's taught it before, but I can't officially say that. We can answer all sorts of other things as we uh, go out for, for some cake and, and punch. But thank you all for coming. We really appreciate your time.